Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the M8A1, which is a gift vehicle that could have been obtained a few years ago in a winter special, so it was part of um, a giveaway between this and the i301, I think, and a bit recently as well it was given away in the monthly war bonds, but it will probably be unable to obtain for quite some time. But it's a very fun and very, very capable tank at its tier. It's, it's 2.7, so the highest thing you're going to meet is you know, T-34, 1942s, KV-1s, Panzer 4Gs, and these are all things that you can dispatch with that 75mm gun that you'll find on the Shermans and the early Jumbo. It's also very, very quick, and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to take it round the flank of the map and possibly flank a little bit too much. Uh, this is the first match I played of the day, and I don't think I played it very well at all. I think I mess it up basically how far I flank, but I think that's a bit of a, a tell of the danger of flanking in a vehicle like this at such a low tier, because if you're playing a light vehicle like this, you've got to keep in mind that everything else you're playing against is usually going to be slow, and they're not going to get too far ahead of you, so if you are flanking, you're likely going to overextend because you're just not going to meet anything quick enough so you feel like you can keep going. And that's exactly what I did. I am aiming to sit on the sniper hill uh, by their spawn so I can shoot some tanks going to be and hopefully take out any tanks that are sniping from behind that hill with the bushes on. But before we get there, let's take a quick look at the lineup I'd recommend for 2.7 America. Now there are already many tanks at 2.7, so what I'd probably go with is, well, the M8A1, which is the focus of this video. You've got a standard, very good SPA in the M16, and you can take out some tanks as well if you're lucky, but mainly you're going to be going for planes, and with those 450s, they do do a good job. Uh, for your other tank destroyer, I'll go with the LVT if you have it. If not, um, go with the... Uh, where is it? Uh, 75 gun motor carriage, as that does pretty much the same job. It's a slow, not really well armoured tank, but it does have a decent gun, and that's what you want it for. Also, I'd go with a light tank as well for those, well, maps where you need a light tank. And Stuart is probably a very good option to have. It's got a decent gun, very, very quick. And its armor's not bad. It can take some hits from SPA, and that's mainly what you're going to be seeing against Germany. And for planes, the Corsair does a decent job, and it also gets a 1,000 pound bomb, as well as 650 cals, which you can go top down and take out pretty much anything you're going to see uh, with those guns as well. And it's pretty decent against planes. Guns aren't too great, doesn't have very many API belts, but still, it does a good job. Uh, the M3 Lee as well, for which is pretty good if you're on an up tier. You know, it's difficult to kill, some things can't penetrate the armor at long range or at different angles, and you have the wedding cake gun and the 37, so you can dish out a lot of damage. And for your bomber, I'd go with the TBD. There are things like the B34 and the B18, or the blob, that you can take out. Um, so, but I would recommend going with the TBD just because it's very maneuverable and it's not a big target, so it's a bit harder to shoot down. And you do get two 500s and then you've got a carpet run of six 100s as well. And I think that would do you for a decent lineup at this tier and it's what I'd go with personally. So I'm practically already here and the map's been going on for about a minute and I'm already... You know, I, I could shoot into their spawn if I wanted to. So I do go a bit too far here, and I think if I would have hung back and protected my team, we might have had a much better outcome. But, either way, I think, despite that mistake, I do pretty well. So, we're just going to pull up here and take a look towards the B point and see what we can see. And there is a Chiha. Kai there, I think. So, Chihi. So take him out. The only danger with that is that I've pushed all this way up here, and now that guy is going to respawn in an SPA, and he knows exactly where I am. So I'm already, in essence, compromised in this location because it is way too close to the spawn. But I am a light tank, in essence, and going directly towards the B point probably isn't a good shout either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait here for that SPA to come back and then push my way into the back of B and hopefully take out some tanks there. 
just seeing if there's anything else coming up, waiting for that guy to come up in a Tarse or a Type 94. Just biding my time, not trying to rev my engine so no one notices me. And I do catch a glimpse of a tank driving in front of me. Now, I, I'm not... I don't like this, because I did realise just after I shot him how close that is to the spawn, you know, and I, I don't think anyone should play like that. It's not fair, and that guy didn't really have any chance to deal with me, so that was completely, uh, you know, bad sportsmanship on my part. And, you know, I'm sorry to that stug player if you're watching, which you're probably not. But either way, lose one crew member, but take out the Tarsay that's coming back for us. So I'm going to push back away from the spawn because I don't want to spawn camp. It's not fun for me. I don't feel gratified killing people like that. So I'm going to get back and wait here until I'm, well, I'd say 80% sure that nothing's going to shoot me in the side when I push back onto B. Now a Panzer three in the side there. A clean kill. And just sizing up my options, really. Is it best to cut across, go back into B now, or wait? and make sure that nothing's going to shoot me as I cut across. And I think I probably should have gone and rushed B now. I spend too much time over here killing people respawning as they're making their way to the B point, and it doesn't help the team out. I overextended and I flanked too much. I played this vehicle, you know, on the sidelines, I think way too much than I should have done. I should have gone in a lot earlier, so I could have helped where the team needed it, which was on B. So. I think I flanked a bit too hard. Either way, I'm looking around just to make sure there's nothing on the other hill. I'm going to push up a little bit here to minimise the distance between their spawn and me as I cross, so I know that nothing is going to hit me, because I have I can see the whole stretch anyone's coming through. So I'm just waiting to pick my moment, and as I'm coming down here, I see a Panzerjäger, and I have really good ping at the moment. I'm not used to that. I usually have about 80 to 120. So while I'm taking this shot, I actually give it way too much lead than I should have done, and I end up just shooting right in front of him, and I must have looked like a right pleb. <laughs> Christ. But either way, he doesn't get that whole traverse on quick enough, and I take him out. And I think that is good time enough to rush back and give the support that I should have given a lot quicker onto B. You can just see how deadly this gun is at this tier. It's going to reliably one shot almost everything from the front and the side because of the nature of the shell and it's got 90 millimeters of pen you know you can pen everything you see at this battle rating pull up behind the tank i'm not sure if it's a corpse give it a little spray with a machine gun and move on back to b so hopefully we can decap it now at this point in the game i'm not sure where anyone is they could literally be anywhere so i need to be really careful where i play and I need to minimise the areas where people can shoot me from. So I push around this corner, another Panzer III, shoot in between the driver's compartment and the turret, so I can knock everyone out in one shot. And noticing that B is going to get capped by that light tank, I can push up here, check down a few of the streets, and see if anything's coming up from the spawn. Still playing it passive, making sure that I don't get taken out. Nothing down that road. So I'm going to back up see where any other tanks could be coming from. So this tank is also incredibly mobile, but it does lack that turret rotation, which is, I think, its death nail. It's the only real downside to this tank. So I pull up here, realise B's getting capped, use the good reverse speed to get back up to the point, and it's another stug. Just reverse into sight, he drives out, into the side, knock out the ammo. Now I'm going to hide in between these two buildings in the fire. Now, usually because it's kind of difficult to see what's in fire in this game, so it's a decent spot for cover, actually. It seems a bit counterintuitive because it's really bright, but generally it does work. So <laughs> I'm just going to wait here, and I spot a Panzer IV coming up the road here. And because it's an early model, it has very little side armor, so my round doesn't actually explode. And I only take out the turret crew. So I'm just trying to spot him through the bush. And I'm just going to wait until I can get a shot, but he drives out and I can go right through the driver and the machine gunner. So, just looking around me, I see a honey behind me. So I'm going to hide behind this building, see where he's looking. He's still looking at where I was, so I might just have enough time to poke out 
and shoot him in the front before he can get me. So, go back, gather myself, and see what the best option to proceed is, as our team is mostly dead by now, there's no one left. So, I see a pack wagon, front plate, get the driver in horizontal drive, don't one-shot it sadly, so he pings me, but no worries, take him out too. So, drive out, look the wrong way, Marder comes down the road, thankfully panic shoots, and lets me stop and securely make that kill through the front plate. So, and I saw a Panzer IV up there with him as well, so I'm going to drive up and get around him, using the very, very good speed of this tank to get in a little square here and shoot him in the side, hopefully. But he has pushed up a little bit, so I'm just going to drive in. He's right behind that wall there. I see him drive up, so take a guess. Engine gunner track, good enough for me. Wait until get that reload, go into the turret, and again it's a Panzer IV C, so no side armour, doesn't set off the fuse. So, and I'm pretty sure I can hear something behind me at this point, so just looking around but I can't see anything. So go through, take out the Panzer IV, look behind me, and it's Panzer II C, who thankfully doesn't go for my turret, so I'm able to swing the traverse around through the front plate, so put the fire out, and I'm back in fighting condition. Now at this point I do only have four shells left, so I'm sort of thinking, well, I don't have very many options. Might as well go out, all guns blazing. So I get tagged up there by the plane, sadly, and every tank on respawn knows where I am and they're going to pincer me in. So, see the Gepard, pull out, get a shot through the driver's hatch on the bounce from the gun. Now, looking around me... See what there is. Marder in front of me, I think. Okay, might as well just rush out, get him. But there is a Gepard and a Panzer IV around the corner, and I lose my turret drive and my gunner. I try and drive around him so I can minimise the tanks that can shoot at me, get shot in the engine, but still manage to swing round, knock out the Panzer III, and I get shot through the turret ring and taken out by the Gepard. But 15 kills, I think, is a good run. And this tank is very, very good, and it is a lot of fun to play at its battle rating, and you can even take it up into higher tiers, just because it is like, well, I don't like using the term baby Hellcat, but I guess, in effect, that's what it is, and lower tiers don't really have a tank like that, so, well, it does a very, very good job. Uh, we don't end up winning that game, it just wasn't enough, I couldn't, if I spawned into a tank, I wouldn't have been able to cap the points quick enough. So I came in back in a Corsair and just did as much damage as I could before the game ended. So, there you go. Bit of a quick game, but I do hope you enjoyed it. Now let's take a look at the review screen. Right, what do we think? Well, to be honest with you, it's difficult to find faults with this tank. It's really quick, very good hull traverse. Your commander is also your gunner, so you constantly have that 50 cal. You also have a 50 cal at 2.7, along with a 75mm gun that can pen 90mm and has enough filler to run shot pretty much everything if you're lucky. Um, the armour itself isn't really something to rely on, but you can against things like SPA unless they hit the turret ring. Apart from that, you're fine. So, from the front or from the side, you're probably going to one shot. You're also really quick, and on most maps you can make good use of that, because nothing you're really going to be playing against is going to be as fast as you, apart from maybe like the T50 or the Puma. So, but you know, you can deal with those things easily, you can pen right through them, and your gun is a lot more powerful. The thing that lets this tank down, and I'd say it's probably the only thing, is its turret drive. It's very, very slow, and it's probably the main thing that's got me killed while playing this tank. Um, it's also a weak spot as well for SPA, so all the bad things lie in the turret ring. So... And the danger with a tank that's really quick like this is, you know, if you're rushing around a corner, you can't swing your turret around quick enough, but you can use that excellent hull traverse as well to get your gun around, but it sometimes just isn't enough. And having the lack of versatility in that turret, you know, if you get your engine taken out, there's not a lot you can do. So if this tank had a, you know, efficient turret drive, I'd be more than happy to give it a 10 out of 10. But... Sadly, I think with that downside, it's going to be a stable 9 out of 10. So, uh, there we are, another little quick video for you. I hope you enjoy it. So, 
This has been like a little test thing that I've done where I've released a plane video and a tank video uh, pretty close together just to gauge the what views each one gets. So I can decide whether focusing on tanks or focusing on planes is the better option. And I'm not sure what it's going to be. I, I'm going to guess tanks probably because more people play tanks and it's a bit more beginner friendly I suppose. And I guess it's just more interesting to watch. There's constantly things happening, there's no climbing. But either way, we'll take a look. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy. Um, like the video, I suppose, if you like it. Uh, I feel a bit weird asking for that. But either way, if you do like it, uh, show me you like it. <laughs> and um, leave a comment down below if you, you know, think my voice is too quiet or I sound suicidal. Or if you have a tank or plane you want me to play, and I'll put it onto the list. So, thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.